Hey there, how's it going? I hope you're having an awesome day today. I'm all about coming on here today to recap you on what happened with my July makeup bag to the August makeup bag because I've decided to just finish finish quite a bit of makeup since I'm on the verge of so many products and you know I, I got to that like month point and I was like do I want to recap I was out of town and then I decided no I'm going to give it like six weeks I was able to finish some more things and so now I'm just going to run with it and then uh see what else I can finish out of my makeup bag for August. So some of these things are rolling over, but I will talk you through what I am rotating in from the rest of my stash. Let's first talk some eyeshadow. So I was able to finish quite a bit of eyeshadow um, because I have moved out of things from my Cap on D palette. I've rotated in quite a few Lorac shadows because they are fairly consistent um, to pan if you want a great starting point to just finish some eyeshadows, gain some confidence in panning. Um, from things out of your collection. So when I ran out of the shade Skulls from my Kat Von D palette for Pan That Palette, I moved into my Snow Shade from my Lorac Pro 2. And what I did with that is I mixed it with the shade Muse from my um, Maybe to Look a Remix. I used this in my inner corner on my brow bone and as a cheek highlight with that Muse shade. I absolutely loved that combination. And if you're wanting a backup pan of snow, I've realized that the Lorac Mega Pro 3 also has another pan of snow. So that was super fun to go on and finish. Um, I'm pretty much solely working out of my Naked 3 palette from now on um, for that shimmery white in there. So I'm going through with the shade Strange because not only is it accomplishing um, continuing that look, I'm actually wearing Strange mixed with Muse right now. In fact, I'm gonna go on and link that Get Ready With Me um, for my Anastasia Modern Renaissance inspired vibe. Um, look in the card above. I'm really proud of that video. It posted yesterday. I hope that you have a lot of fun um, trying out those shadows as well. And again, it kind of works with the theme of what I'm going with um, in terms of finishing eyeshadow and then continuing to move through some more things on my collection. So check that out if you're um, interested in that. So I'm using Strange right now and then it also helps me um, get a little bit more progress for the hashtag It's Been Emotional Project Pan. Um, I'm going to kind of combine my updates for that um, uh, around the 20th of this month because since I um, missed the last month's update because I've just, I've, like I said, I've been out of town and super busy um, to get a little bit more progress on this palette as well. Then for some more hashtag project pan porn with my Lorac Mega Pro palette, this is where I'm sitting right now. I actually finished Mulberry today. That is a sad, sad day because I've really enjoyed wearing this eyeshadow on an everyday basis. Again, that get ready with me focused around like a modern renaissance kind of vibe really um, it helped me get a lot of use out of this shadow. So I do miss it, but it is very easy to dupe with other things in your collection as you'll see in that video. So what I'm gonna go on and do from this point on since I do wanna try to see how much I can finish out of this palette is I'm gonna be mixing the shade Merlot with Destroyer um, from my Kat Von D palette. It's not an exact dupe, but I get enough of a burgundy vibe, especially when I use the orange and the, the highlighting shade and then go through with a black or an espresso in the outer corner that I really do kind of get the same vibe. So I'm going to run with it and just see what I can do and finish, you know, another shadow out of here. And then I'm also going to be working on caviar once again because my black metal shade in my Kat Von D palette, every time I use it, it crumbles. There's black shadow in every other color in that palette. It's all over my counter, it's a hot mess, and I'm over it. So I did use black metal today in my outer third and on my lash line, and it pretty much dusted out what was left of that shadow. So from this point forward, I'm gonna go on and move into caviar to go on and see if I can finish two more shades out of this palette, hopefully, hopefully by the start of September, we'll see. And then I'm also working on, this is a combination of Dusty Plum and Dusty Rose mixed together. I didn't have much of Dusty Plum when I started and Dusty Rose, I did get to the point where I hit pan by the end of July. So I've made a Franken shadow with them and I'm just going through and running this in my crease. So I do wanna see if I can finish this by the start of September. And then I'll move back into my Naked 3 with Limit and Nooner to really give a month's worth of progress for hashtag. It's been emotional. So that's where I am with eyeshadow and then um, just to kind of put my goals out there with my pan that palette since the update is coming next week I believe um, I'm really going in for the kill to finish legend hoping for the best that I can finish it by 
um, the end of August. We'll see. Um, I'm also working on Destroyer and Swoon as a blush. And like I said, I'm going to mix Destroyer with that Merlot shade from the Lorac Mega Pro palette. I'm still working on Muse. I want to hit Pan for a second time because I did hit Pan. I repressed it so it wouldn't, you know, destroy my brush. Um, so we'll see if I can hit Pan on it again. I'm still working on Echo. Still working on Analog. And then Black Metal is going to be Black Metal. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of a pain in the butt shade. So that's where I am with my pan that palette and then you'll get to see the actual progress coming up foundation wise i'm still loving 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 my becca first light priming uh first light priming filter the instant complexion refresh i am just above actually i may be i think i'm just above the halfway mark at this point i received this from octoly and i've used it every day since it is so amazing i love mixing this with foundation so um, last month, by the end of July, I was able to finish this Maybelline Dream Velvet um, Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. I actually have a couple of tubes of this in my backup stash because Maybelline has decided to discontinue this foundation, which is so disappointing to me because I really love this. Right now, it's my favorite drugstore foundation of all time, especially mixed with this primer. So I do have a couple more backups, but I wanted to kind of switch and do something different for a little bit. So... What I've gone on and done is I had a bottle of this Rimmel Lasting Finish uh, Skin Perfecting Full Coverage Foundation in the shade Soft Beige. I bought one of those airless pumps off of Amazon and I poured in the Rimmel Foundation and then I had just a smidge of the Clinique Even Better Glow Foundation. When they mix together, they make a really good color, but as you can see when it settles in the tube, um, the foundations don't mix very well, um, but on the skin, they do make a very lovely combination. I've been really happy with it. It's definitely a thinner formula, um, much more watery than the Dream Velvet Mousse, so that's taken a little bit of getting used to, but I do like the combination of this, so we're going to see if I can finish this. As you can see, I've already started kind of like um, getting the air pump to push up that foundation, so... I'll keep you posted on how it goes. Um, I definitely have to pull in a concealer because this foundation is not as full coverage as the Maybelline, but um, it took me about six weeks. I was able to finally finish my Benefit Boing Brightening Concealer. I only use this on my under eye area. It didn't really work the way I wanted it to on the rest of my skin, but I didn't really need an additional concealer with this foundation to be very honest. But what I would do is I would take my beauty sponge and I would swirl it around the bottom of the container and then apply it to my eye area. And it was just wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. So since this is done, I've gone on and I have a tube of the um, It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Full Coverage Anti-Aging Waterproof Concealer. This has been a really, like standout favorite for me for a very long time so I wanted to go back and revisit it and try it out so I picked up a tube of this because I didn't have one in my backup stash um, and so today is my first day kind of using the IT Cosmetics Concealer and I like the fact that I can kind of warm it up between my fingers and use it to spot conceal blemishes and things on my face so with this thinner foundation I think it's going to be a, a great way for me to kind of make some waves on this particular tube because the IT Cosmetics Concealer lasts a very very long time so kudos on that we're gonna be working on that concealer for quite a while oh i also forgot to update you um brow powder i've been using my um mac mariah curie quad and i'm that chick you like with this espresso shade i've been able to hit pan and expand it a little bit but i've also um i wanted to recap you on this maybelline single and made for mocha that i've been working on because i i had I had, I had, I had a pan on it in July. I wanted to expand that pan a little bit, so um, I did. I expanded it, and I'm actually going to um, continue tossing it into my makeup bag for August because on days when I want to smoke out my outer corner with espresso, I actually prefer the Maybelline formula to the MAC because it's a little bit more of a rich um, espresso pigmentation, whereas this is a little bit drier. So I love this for brows, but for actual shadow, this one works a little bit better for me. Okay, so sidebar there. Then for eyeshadow primer, I've been able to really kind of expand the pan in my soft ochre paint pot. Um, again, since it's so far around the edges of the jar, I take my beauty sponge and I just swirl it once and then pat it onto my eye area and then set it with the powder that I'm going to talk about next. So I'm thinking I could probably finish this by the beginning of August. So fingers crossed. I've really, I'm back in love with this product um, again, but I am kind of anxious to 
go and try something different. You know what I mean? Just to just to kind of shake things up. Um, powder wise, I've been working on my um, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Mood Light. This powder, um, I've done a lot of work on it, but as you can see, part of it has cracked. I did not naturally hit pan like in all these areas, but as you can see, the dip I've made is pretty substantial. Um, but while I was out of town, I dropped it and pieces of it shattered. And I tried my best to use the pieces, but it just got to be such a nuisance um, because it, they would flake everywhere and it was just, it was a mess. So I dumped the chunks out and I'm back to just using um, the powder. I really do like it in combination with that Becca primer. Um, and then again, kind of going with some purple tones that I'll talk about in a minute that I've been using on my eyes. This is a really lovely way to just give an ethereal glow um, kind of setting powder situation and again, move out some old makeup from my collection. So I've really been, really been loving this lately. So I'm going to just continue wearing it since I'm going to stick with that kind of modern renaissance vibe with my eyeshadow. Then eyeliners, I was able to finish. I'm actually missing one of the eyeliner pencils, but I was able to finish two eyeliners. The first one is my NYX Faux White Eyeliner in the shade White Smoke. This is the new, well, it's not new anymore, but the second tube that I have, or pencil, oh, where's my brain going today? Um, but the second pencil of this color, I love it because it has a really um, strong kind of lilac-y vibe. I love to use it in my inner corner and on my brow bone to really amp up my highlight with using a shimmery white muse combined together. It is absolutely stunning. So I got this pencil down to where I couldn't sharpen it anymore. And kind of fun fact, if I can pull this out, um, you don't even get to the bottom of these NYX pencils. And when you start sharpening it, you get down to like clear balm. It's kind of weird, but I got to that point with this pencil. So it's done. And then the other thing that I finished was a Maybelline waterproof gel, um, liner pencil in the shade polished amethyst. I got it down to where it was like this far and it refused to sharpen anymore. And I love the color so much that I've gone on and just repurchased it. Um, to toss into my makeup bag as I pan the shade Echo out of my Kat Von D palette. So that's been super fun and I'm not sick of it at all. So I'm really enjoying that. Then for brow pencils, I take my makeup off before I go to work out in the evening just because I'm, I do Taekwondo and I don't like my makeup um, transferring onto that white uniform. It's a really big nuisance to get out. And so I take all my makeup off, but um, I do like to wear kind of a brow <laughs> Um, a vibe before I go to class just so I have some definition under my glasses. So I went through and I've been using this It Cosmetics Brow Power in the shade Universal Taupe. I purchased a duo of these off of QVC.com. I was able to get to the very bottom of this pencil. It only took me about a month um, of use on a daily basis because I do Taekwondo pretty much all week long when I'm not out of town. So since I went through with that, I'm now working on the second pencil that I got in that duo set. This is really nice and it's, it's supposed to work with you depending on um, your hair color and your skin color. You adjust kind of the intensity that you use to apply it. Um, and so far so good. I really do like this particular brow pencil. So one out in with the other. And then liner, oh my word. Okay, this is it Cosmetics Gel Liner. I just need a break. I need a break from this product. I was able to expand the pan a little bit. This is where I currently am. But I decided for the rest of August, I really just wanna phase in a pencil. Like I, I need a break. I just, I need to step away and do something different. So I have this sample of a Lancome Noir Intense um, liquid pencil. So this is kind of where I am right now. I'm just going to finish this off um, for the rest of the month. I definitely prefer the opaqueness of the It Cosmetics liner in comparison to the pencil because I mean with the two textures they're they're two completely different things and, and the way they apply and look it's very very different but like I said I'm just going to go through and I'm going to finish off this pencil and just move something else out of my backup stash and give me a nice shake up from having to clean that eyeliner brush on a daily basis. Um, I'm also still using my NYX Cashmere um, Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil because like I mentioned, I'm gonna be going in to finish Legend um, before the end of August, so I'm still continuing to work on that. And then I'm still loving my Franken Bronzer. I cannot believe I have like fallen in love with this product, especially since it's such a hodgepodge of um, just warm eyeshadows that I had in my collection, kind of reddish tone eyeshadows that I've had, but I can't get enough of it. it. It just works well with this berry look. It works well when I want to wear cool toned eyeshadows. Um, 
I was completely inspired after painting the Becca um, Shimmering Skin Perfector and Gradient Glow that I got from Octoly when I finished it. I just, I couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to go through it and figure out how to dupe it for my collection and I'm still loving this. So I'm wearing it every single day. I can't show you where I am because it is too dark to see through this container and I've got a sifter in the top of it, but I'm still, actually you can get a little bit of a color vibe going there. It's kind of similar to Bare Minerals Warmth or um, like I said, the Becca Gradient Glow um, Shimmering Skin Perfector. Love, love, love this. Then in terms of mascara, um, I was using a sample size of the Clinique uh, High Impact, High Impact Mascara, just a sample size. It has gotten to the point where it's still a little bit usable, but it's definitely dry and flaky on my lashes. So I'm just going to go on and, you know, use it for a couple more days. And then I have a tube of the L'Oreal Voluminous Flash Paradise um, from my backup stash. I remember really liking this mascara when I used a tube of it quite a while ago. So I went on and purchased another tube just to kind of revisit it and see if I like it. And then normally with this kind of mascara, I don't really get much more than about a month worth of use out of it before it completely dries out. So I figured why not get a drugstore um, mascara into rotation and something that I know that I can get through pretty quickly. So I'm gonna have some fun with that. And then in terms of lips, I'm still working on my MAC um, World Lip Liner. This is just yet another pencil because this is a staple in my makeup. And I'm actually thinking about throwing this into my purse because I have the teeniest little nub of a pencil in there and some excuse me, somehow it has disappeared. So this may get tossed into my purse and then I'll figure out kind of what to do with my um, lip product selection because I don't know, I may also switch up my eye look, but I'll keep you posted if I decide to kind of go in because I kind of want to use Harpsichord from my Kat Von D palette as well. I don't know, but like I said, I'll keep you posted with the get ready with me and all that. But I'm still continuing to work on this and I'm also working on um, Max Twig. This just happens to be the Mirage Noir packaging. I wanted to try it out because I've never tried twig before. This is kind of where I am. I'm wearing it on an everyday basis. I really love the color. Again, it's another My Lips But Better. Um, definitely, I feel like I've kind of been in that love affair with this type of shade since I've panned quite a few lipsticks of this type um, over the past several months between Bite Beauty's Chai, Bite Beauty's Pepper, even though Pepper's a little bit more pink. Um, and then um, Max Taupe. Um, and then this being twig, it's a little bit more pink versus the brown on the toe, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And especially since the eyeshadow is so dark, I definitely wanted something really easy. And then setting spray, I actually don't have the bottle anymore because I filmed this a couple days ago, but the footage was all like crazy and just all over the place. So I don't have it anymore, but it's the Milani, um, make it dewy setting spray. I used it every single day. It took me about five weeks to finish what was left in that bottle. So since then, I wanted to still continue using another drugstore setting spray. So I have been working on my CoverGirl Look Lock Up All Day Setting Mist. I love that the spray nozzle is not quite as aggressive on this as the Milani one and the scent is a little bit less intense. So it's actually been quite pleasant um, to use this on an everyday basis. And one of the things I've discovered with this Rimmel foundation, I like it better um, when I set my face with the mist before I do the powder and then I go through with another couple of spritzes when I'm completely done with my makeup just to make sure that everything is set for the day because I am dealing with some pretty um, pretty high humidity and, and a lot of heat and I definitely want to make sure that my makeup is not transferring onto my clothing during the day. So I, it's actually giving me a couple extra spritzes every day to go through and use it on my foundation. Like after I do my foundation, my concealer and my um, MAC paint pot, I'll go through and spritz a couple times. And then um, when I'm completely done with my makeup, I'll go in and spritz a couple times just to lock it all in. So that's where I am. Lots of progress, lots of finished makeup. I'm feeling good about where I am with my makeup. I'm feeling like I'm back into my panning groove and really just kind of moving through shadows and definitely progressing with Project Pan Porn and moving some, you know, additional eyeshadows out. I finally kind of met my stride with my Kat Von D palette because I'm not, I'm not worried about finishing as much as I, like, I'm not putting the pressure on myself. You know what I mean? Because I'm using what I can and I'm seeing what else I can do with other areas of my collection. So I'm kind of at a wondering what to do 
um, for 2019 because I know I've had several requests to like pan palettes that I've already hit pan in um, and just finish off some more eyeshadow. I'm also kind of debating about just starting off with another palette from, you know, start to finish. So let me know in the thoughts or in the comments below kind of what your thoughts are, what you'd like to watch me pan. Um, Cause I feel like after I finish the Kat Von D palette, wherever it ends up in December, um, I'm gonna kind of evaluate what I'm gonna do with it from there. Um, because I am still, I'm still happy with the looks I'm creating from it. Um, but I also kind of want to hear what you're interested in, in terms of panning from here on out. I know burgundy is going to be a really big trend in the fall and winter, um, maybe going into spring next year. So I'm kind of debating about the Lorac, um, unzipped palette. Um, I'm also kind of looking at my Lorac, um, Mega Pro 2, um, since cooler tones are coming back in, into fashion. And I'm also kind of thinking about like maybe a Juvia's Place palette. But again, I'm also open to the idea of going through and finishing off more palettes that I've already hit pan in. So I'm curious to what you would like to see. So let me know. And that about wraps it up. Take care. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I look forward to catching up with you soon. See you later.